So at this point, you should be looking at your results from TED Talks analysis number one, understanding where your weaknesses may lie and improving upon those weaknesses before you complete the assessment in class. Let's take a look at the model example to understand how to improve. If you go to the English 8 rhetoric bundle, you will find the model example in the TED Talks block. You can find it right here with the link. The model example is your textbook for this assignment. It includes an example of the Neil Harbison talk, I Listen to Color, with annotations. The annotations address how to answer the question, and they are often based upon student examples. So, if I find that a student is missing a certain point repeatedly, then I will create an annotation. If you are suffering a weakness in your answer, check the annotation. It should provide guidance, but I will explain as well. When you look at your results on TED Talks analysis number one, you will see a rubric like this. A three indicates that you are doing everything just fine. If you scroll through and you see twos or ones, pay attention. A zero, of course, means that you simply did not complete the prompt. But a two or one indicates room for improvement. A two shows that you know what you're talking about, you simply haven't expanded. This is a problem in student writing. Be sure to expand and explain clearly with specific detail your answers to the prompts. A one indicates that you did not really understand the prompt at all. Go back to the model example. Take a look at the annotations. Try to understand what I am looking for. Let's do that now. This is the Harbison example. Let's go through the delivery section. Describe the speaker's appearance is fairly clear. However, students often make the mistake of not being specific in their detail on the appearance. Look at mine. Harbison is dressed in neat professional clothes, but those clothes are brightly, playfully colorful. I could even add detail to this. Harbison wears a blazer. And let's look at the picture. That is pink. A shirt that is blue and pants that are yellow. Someone in class even noticed his haircut. His haircut is a playful boy's bowl cut. Adding detail can help help you with appearance. Let's move to the speaker's body language. The speaker's body language is a description of how they move their body and how they move their hands. And again, students often fail to be specific in this. Let's take a look at my example. He stands slightly hunched over, moving back and forth on the stage, but not making use of the entire stage. Harbison uses his hands often, moving both of them up and down all and all around actively. So we want to explain how, though, he moves. So we can add something. He moves comfortably back and forth. Harbison uses his hands often, moving both of them up and down and all around actively. He uses them without much clear emphasis of ideas. In other words, he's simply moving his hands as a part of his talk but he does not seem to move his hands specifically to indicate an idea. Let's move to the speaker's eye contact. This is a fairly simple prompt for a student to answer, and students usually do well with it. Harbison makes eye contact with his audience often, but not all the time. At times, he looks up to the ceiling and down to his hands or the floor. This is specific in where he directs his eye contact and how often. Describe the speaker's vocal delivery. This can be challenging for students because students often have not been asked to qualify a speaker's vocal delivery. You can use words like high-pitched or low-pitched. You can use fast or slow, comfortable, uncomfortable. You can talk about pauses in the speech, trembles in the speech. Let's see what I've done with Harbison's. Harbison's voice is high-pitched but clear. He speaks with pauses at times, but these pauses show that he is speaking without a script. His delivery shows his excitement through occasional speedy discussion. He speaks with a distinct accent. I have described the vocal delivery completely. Explain the speaker's use of multimedia. 
Multimedia refers to any audio or visual that is used to enhance the speech. And this should be fairly clear, but make sure that you are answering how he uses it. Harbison uses pictures to show a variety of images. He uses pictures to show what he would see in black and white and emphasize his points. For example, he uses an image of an orange with a tuning fork as emphasis. He also uses audio tracks to play the color sounds to the audience. He merges audio and video when he shows an image and plays the sound associated with it. I can add one sentence to this. These images and sounds show the audience. What Harbison is explaining verbally. Clear detail and clear purpose. Describe the speaker's audience interaction. Some students did not understand this prompt quite clearly. This refers to any way that the speaker breaks the space between himself and the audience. Does that speaker move among the audience? Does that speaker actually discuss anything with the audience? Harbison does not do much. Let's take a look. Harbison stands on a stage separate from the audience. He pauses when his audience laughs and he makes them laugh often. So he does not interact directly. He's separate from them on a stage, but he does make them laugh. And this is interaction. The final prompt, evaluate the speaker's overall effectiveness and delivery, discusses the conclusion of all of the evidence above. So the answer should include evidence from above. And if you're not including evidence from the previous prompts, you're not answering this prompt effectively. You should also make sure that you are writing some sort of conclusion sentence that discusses I like this, discusses your final idea or opinion. Harbison delivers his speech well. You might say that he is a very effective speaker, a somewhat effective speaker, or not an effective speaker. I've decided just to say that he delivers his speech well. His pauses show that he has not artificially practiced his speech. He seems honest and excited about his subject. The audience laughs often, showing how well they react to him. Note that I have not included every piece of evidence from above simply enough to support my point. If you can follow these directions, you can complete part one effectively. Review your results on TED Talks Analysis Part 1, and remember everything that I've said when you go into the assessment in class.